Alrighty, chat. Let's talk about Clock Tower really quick. All right. New trailer has dropped. We're gonna watch it here in a moment because I, I've already seen it. Uh, you know, I've kind of seen bits and pieces. We're gonna watch the whole thing in a moment here. But a lot of harassing. What is it? What's going on, dude? I've seen the worst takes on Twitter so far. It's Twitter. You're gonna see the worst takes. So if you're wondering, what should we expect from this? What are we gonna get? So the new Clock Tower game coming out is going to be the first real instance of the original Clock Tower game coming out a, for American audiences or any Western audiences. Uh, famously, Clock Tower SNES or Super Famicom F SFC only ever came out in Japan. There are no official English releases of it at all. There are none. Anyone who's ever played it in English has either played it through emulator or they played it through fan carts. Because back in the day, fan carts uh, would come from weebs in Japan who would uh, kind of program their own game. And it's a kind of a weird form of emulation, essentially. Uh, anyway, going into it, like I said, this game only ever existed in Japan. So um, a lot of people just don't know what's going on with it. And yeah, it's Twitter. But uh, there's a lot of updates with that. Uh, we'll talk more about it when we actually watch the trailer. But I wanted to mention that there. Uh, in terms of what's being done is it's going to be a port of essentially the original Clock Tower, let's say SFC, uh, SNES. This isn't a redo. It, it, you're, all right, listen up. Stop interrupting and just listen. What's being released is going to be something quite neat. One. I said it's the original game. The original game of Clock Tower is kind of weird because there are four versions of the original Clock Tower. All of them are exclusive to Japanese audiences. You have the original game I just pulled out, which is the Super Nintendo one, or the Super Famicom one, because again, they're in North America. Two, you have the uh, the PC version, which came out a couple years later. Or, yeah, a couple years later. You then have the PS1 version, which came out shortly afterward and added, like, all these had more updates which added a little bit more, like, lore. And then last and certainly least, we have the Wonderswan version. The Wonderswan version was for a console called the Wonderswan. All these exclusive to Japan, and um, the most is that they added a little... Yeah, Wonderswan. I actually have a copy of that. Uh, one moment. Oh, God. Where did I put my... Con where did I put it? There it is. Yeah, that bad boy. Yeah, we have Clock Tower for the Wonder Swan, which is wild, right? A Wonder Swan game. Yeah, Wonder Swan's trippy. Um, and it's like all black and white, and it's kind of awkward, but uh, it's a very, very neat game. Um, do I have a Wonder Swan? No, I don't have a Wonder Swan, and even if I did, I have no way of streaming a Wonder Swan without just emulating the console. So, um, yeah, we're not doing Wonder Swan. <laughs> so. Continuing with that, what should we expect from the new one? Well, the new one's most likely just going to be a slightly updated version of the... I'm assuming the PS1 version. Uh, the PS1 version's kind of the definitive version of the game. And it's really weird, because you're like, Oh, we're not getting a Clock Tower remake! We already had a Clock Tower remake. <laughs> it, that's what the PS1 version is. It was a remake of the SNES version. And that's wild when you think about it. Because why would they remake a game two years after it came out? It was for those additional things. The PS1 version of the game actually had, uh, what was it? It had additional scares. It had additional things you could do in it. Uh, the big thing was that in one of the rooms, it was a forced objective you had to do. You had to uh, kill a mummy with a knife. Uh, and that was like a major story requirement that happened. Like you need to do that to win. If you don't do that, you can't beat the game. It's kind of one of the things like the, uh, the demon idol or finding the dad. You have to do it. And that's only exists to the PS1 version. Uh, the PC version also added something, and what it added was Dan um, getting out of the muck of the orphan meat. Um, which, yes, the orphan meat neck. But yeah, he rises out of that in the P uh, PC version. It also added a cutscene in the very beginning, which, uh, yeah, it's something you've never seen it. I haven't been doing good. Yeah, so every version added new features. So what's going to happen is we're likely going to get something that's going to be... If I had to guess, it's going to be based on either the PC version or the PS1 version. I'll kind of play like that. Because uh, I, I can't imagine the new one's going to play like the SNES version. The SNES version is my favorite version. That's what we use for speedrunners. However, for a completionist's sake, it's probably going to play like the PS1 version. Because that is the most definitive version of the game, quote-unquote. 
Um, as well, it sounds like they might be adding quality of life options. Um, officially, uh, let's see the article they did, because I think they talk about, uh, they talk about some of the announcements that they got, which I'll actually be pulling up the trailer here in a moment. But from what I remember, they're adding new cutscenes. Uh, people have actually been complaining about this for some reason, which is fucking dumb. If you see someone complaining about the anime cutscenes, they're dumb. I don't know why, because Clock Tower had a manga! You didn't know this! People don't know this! There was a Clock Tower manga that came out back in, like, the 90s, and it had additional lore that we do not get to see. It flushes these characters out, and it's very likely they're going to make these cutscenes based on this manga, which is such a weird thing. Clock Tower also had a novelization. Yes, there is. Uh, I'll show up these anime stills once we get to the, uh... Actually, let's do it pulling up right now. Hold on, hold on. I'll pull it up right now. Uh, do I have an image I can use? Uh, what was this? Oh, that was a game key. Alright, uh, well, it's a game key for when I got already, already, uh, already something here. Alright, let me save this. Alright, one moment here, chat. Alright, so check this out. Alright, so I put this right here. Yeah, so this is official images from the manga, and the thing is, there, you know, it was like, I think it came with the uh, copies of the game. It was a little booklet. You would read it, and it would have uh, additional lore, and it would have different kind of character arcs, which you can you could see some very cool uh, images here. Jennifer being uh, attacked by the Scissor Man, features the crow, stuff like that. But if you want to play on the anime art, well, the art that we ended up getting was, um, let's see. It was this one. I'm gonna be saving a lot of images and showing them off today, which is kind of trippy. Don't mind me, I'm kind of uh, doing this as I go. All right, there we go. Oh God, this is a large image. Probably should have downloaded a smaller image. Five. Oh, absolutely, Lamper, absolutely. But, like, I've been seeing people complain about it. I'm not worried. I'm not worried in the slightest. Like, it looks solid. All right, here we go. This is uh, what it's looking like right now. Perfect. I'll put it right up here. Yeah, and honestly, I think this looks great. I think this looks solid. I think this looks great. I think it looks fine. Yeah, it's a nice art style. This is a very nice art style. Uh, and this art style also seems like what they're gonna be doing for intermittent cutscenes. Uh, once we actually get to the Clock Tower game, I'll probably tell you what they're going to be using this for because they mentioned they're adding new cutscenes, and the cutscenes are likely going to be the things that are for the um. But when him on the SNES, they didn't have a lot of cutscenes in the game. What happened was they put stills on front of you, and then they put text under it. So, things like picking up the demon idol, things like talking to your dad's dead body, things like going to the, um, you know, the meat locker, uh, all these just had a still, and they didn't really have a whole lot more than that. So what's likely going to happen is as you interact with the stuff now, or maybe even for some of the endings that weren't even fleshed out, we're probably going to get actual cutscenes, which, that's awesome, right? I can imagine it's going to be that way. Which, dude, I, I like that, oh, we're having this generic anime style. Dude, we get an actual cutscene for all the game's endings. You know how many of the game's endings are a black screen with credits and text? Give me a, give me a, give me a style. Give me a style, I'm cool with this. Oh, that's okay, uh, the color and anything needs a bit of during texture. Well, this is just one image we've seen so far. And honestly, I'm pretty cool with it. I, I like the way it looks. I think it's pretty, especially with, you know, Jennifer and the scissors, clock tower in the background. I think it's nice. Also, as much as I love the original Clock Tower box art, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I think it's amazing. It has nothing to do with the game. It is beautiful, but it has nothing to do with the game. Uh, chat, you may have seen the original Clock Tower box art. Uh, in fact, I have it literally on my screen at all times. You've seen it, even if you don't think you've seen it. Uh, as much as I love it, I can, uh, I can attest it has literally nothing to do with the game. Uh, also, fun fact about the original box art. Uh, you can see it right here. Uh, there we go. Uh, the original boxer right here, uh, this is slightly inspired by the girl with the pearl earring. Uh, it's a famous art piece. You probably all know it, or you may vaguely know it, but yeah. But it's weird, because, like, this character doesn't look like Jennifer, and this character never shows up, though. So. Yeah. It's a very, very minor inspiration there, but it, yeah, that's what it's meant to be. And there's, like, a little clock in the background, but, but that's the original one. 
But that's just me. That's the thing. It, it doesn't relate to the game at all. It just it looks cool. That's it. Um, which is why you know later on they actually ended up changing the box art for the um. Oh wow, well, he's been talking for over ten minutes. What? No, not the Bengals. Get out of here. There we go. Yeah, it's haunting. It's nice, but that is the case. Uh, why? Well, I, I I've been geeking out a little bit here. Don't let me there. But either way, I think it's gonna be exciting. I think it'll be fun. I'm Jared. I hope you're doing good today. Um, yeah. And then as well, they're probably gonna add quality of life options. I'm thinking, thinking one of the best ones they're gonna add. I already tweeted about this. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to add um, running on stairs. I, I, like, come on. You talk about quality of life options, you gotta add number one. You know how many people are gonna complain about running on stairs if they leave that in? They, they will, they absolutely will. But yeah, I imagine they'll probably tool that around. Um, as well, uh, it seems like they're gonna be keeping a lot of the original styles. Uh, they talked a bit about it, but uh, Chad, I can say as much as I want, but how about we just watch a little bit of it? I think it'll be fun. So we'll go here. And uh, really quick, we'll begin the marathon in one moment. I just want to show you all the trailer that I put out. So, all right. Uh, which one is it? It is this one. All right, ready? All right, here we go. I'll put that on full screen. All right, so here's the here's the trailer. I'll put up max volume. All right, ready? In the Fallen Out, running's going to change? No, I'll probably stay in the game. One more thing I'm expecting them to probably change is they'll probably make the Sandy mechanic in the game actually impactful, if I had to guess. So, all right, let's watch. Look at this. Look at this, man. A clock tower announcement in our Starting current year. City Girl Zero, we've been bringing these uh, Japanese-only releases to a Western audience. And I think being able to put that on modern platforms is fantastic, allows more people to experience something. That yeah, this is the trailer that ended up dropping before. online. We are definitely looking into more of these. It's Personally, way forward and limited run games. games. Yesterday was a good day. We also got a new Gex, which... Cartwright. I am the creative lead of the Port Plus version of Clock Tower. Port Plus I've is accurate, so that's the thing. Love, it's you know, additions Resident to the original Silent Port. Hill. I just love horror games in general and horror movies. But Clock Tower in particular is a game that I discovered when I was probably about 16, and it holds a really special place in my heart because at the time it was the not to mention you can see right there. We're probably gonna get an actual, actual opening. Jennifer, the original game just has kind of like text and stills. That's what we're talking about with the cutscenes being replaced. The anime cutscenes are like the actual cutscenes. You're fighting monsters and you're shooting them with guns, and that can still be scary. But Clock Tower is distinct in that you Neat. really don't have any of those tools. It was one of the first experiences for me that really was like that in terms of horror. Yeah, I think it's going to be PC. I think it's going to be everything. I know it's going to be Switch, PC, and I think PS5 horror. and stuff. You, know, you can only survive. And I think it is a game that has a lot of quieter tension. One thing I'd be really curious, by the way, with Jennifer the wait. Is such an interesting character because at the start wait a minute. of the game, we don't know a lot about her, and I think the game. The race is name of the raid, by the way. Name of the raid. Name of the raid. Chat, hold on. I didn't notice that the first time. I didn't notice that. Hold on. Hold on. I didn't notice that. Let me let me freeze frame. That scream right there, like I I think I was right. I was absolutely right. Hold on a minute. I was absolutely right. Given the, the look at this, this isn't the SNES version. This is absolutely not the SNES port. I know it isn't. I know very well. This is the PS1 or the PC port. This is one of the two. I know for a fact it is. But also, I'll sign that. I'll sign for the raid. Okay, had a good day. All right, let's go back to it. Jennifer is such an interesting character because at the start of the well, it's game, weird because there's a lot of differences. Lot and this is what I was talking about. This is the intro. This is all you get. Of, of revealing a very heartbreaking story about her, you know, through different playthroughs of the game because it has a bunch of endings. And, and I Paul, think that's part of what got me so attached. I'm excited. There's kind and of also, like this is the, the first engineering aspect of official that, and then release the aspect of like in English. Get stuff back into the game. You wanna know that? I know this very, very anal, like and I love it. As it was. And also, also chat, we're in my own uh, clock tower like inspired version. Zero, we had the manga cutscenes. That's a fun little surprise for people. I'm involved as well. The animated opening is pretty crazy. 
That's where we can add our own creativity, adding intro sequences and new translations. For Clock Tower specifically, there's a lot of like scripting events in there. So there might be a command to say, so, change the display speed of text. That's kind of been a tricky thing too with localization. Looking like, at something as I well, that? I've talked about this. The of color at the bottom that left, that's supposed to be a sanity mechanic. You might actually see something with that. To be a part of it in any way at all is just incredible. All right, there we go. I mean, a carbon engine, that's pretty much the end of it. Uh, here we go. So, a few more things that they talked about and I want to talk about as well. Uh, one, they're adding a new song. I am excited to see the song. I want to hear what it's going to sound like. Having more music to this, Clock Tower is a game that has more good music as the series progressed. But also, it just you can only do so much on the SNES. So, I'm really excited. It's going to be a, a sung song, too. So, that should be fun. That's what I want to talk about, too. So, the companies working on this are... Sunsoft, WayForward, um, it says Carbon Engine, Limited Run, and Capcom. Capcom doesn't own Clock Tower. Like, we, we actually checked this as well in uh, in my Discord, and I, I've known this for a while. And yeah, wasn't it Mary Elizabeth uh, McGlynn, the person who do works with uh, Akira Mocha a lot? Or I think it's someone else. But also, Capcom doesn't do Clock Tower anymore. They, they only work with Clock Tower 3. So when I saw Capcom here, I'm really wondering, why is Capcom here? Like, I'm really interested to see this. And it, like, uh, what's being theorized right now is that it could be uh, Clock Tower 3 based stuff because Sunsoft fully owns Clock Tower. Like they fully own this. Uh, they had other projects that had no, like, no Capcom name, which is the um, Clock Tower Mobile, which, uh, Publishing rights, it's really weird though. Like, I don't know what publishing rights they really have because they're able to do Clock Tower Mobile and I don't think they're credited at all. So it's strange. Either way, I think it'll be fine. I think it's in good hands. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, it looks exciting. And Port Plus really is the big thing that is about this. It's gonna be the original port with a lot of new things. And it's likely going to be the PS1 port. They're gonna be able to have all that fun content. And I'm assuming they're gonna add a bunch of fun stuff to that. So I'm quite excited uh, as well. I mean, it's just kind of a game I've geeked out about for over for years and I'm not worried. I think it's going to be great. I see a lot of people worrying right now, like especially on Twitter, like people complain about the anime art style. People complain about little things with it. People are complaining. It's not like a full remaster. This, this right here, this is great. This is absolutely great. This right here is great. Yes, it's going to be a port plus is how it's being defined as. And uh, I'm, I'm pumped. Uh, this game means a lot to a lot of people, and a lot of people find it through various ways. I found this game when I was in high school with my buddies, uh, and then we ended up playing through um, a bunch of the games. So, yeah. And, you know, it should be neat to see what they do with it. Also, I think if this does well, if this does well right here, I would fully expect Clock Tower PS1 or Clock Tower 2 to probably get something much larger in scope. I can totally see that. Like, this game is timeless. This game is a classic. Hey, Blackguard, they're in the Prime Gaming for 18 months. Enjoy the two Twitch babies, the emotes and the decision. Thank you. Hope you're doing good. No, no, I'm not talking Ghost Head. I'm talking about Clock Tower PS1. Clock Tower PS1's in a weirder area where it's not quite as aged as well as this one. Not Ghost Head. Clock Tower 2, also known as Clock Tower PS1. Also, Star Wars Friends, the end of the tournament, 26 months as well. Anyway, I'm probably going to upload this side to YouTube for general analysis and geeking out. So I just wanted to I wanted to be able to share this with you as well. Just looking at some of the stuff. I'm really excited, especially if they have physical stuff like chat. You, you know me. I have kind of really based my whole identity on this franchise. No, Sunsoft's its own company that does like uh, mobile games in Japan. And they do a lot of uh, re-releases of classic games. Uh, they're definitely their own thing. They also do a lot of VR stuff, um, but they own Clock Tower since 2003. Uh, Clock Tower was originally made by a company called Human, but then Human went under, and then it went over to Sunsoft. Uh, people will very often liken stuff to Capcom because Sunsoft worked with Capcom specifically to make Clock Tower 3, which it's really weird that... Actually, wait a minute. I wonder if they uh, Capcom worked on Clock Tower PS1 at all. Uh, I'm curious on that. Because I don't know if they worked on that port at all. They might have? That would actually be maybe possibly the reason why. Uh, it's a very weird... Uh, it's Clock Tower of the First Fear. That's the one it's likely to be based on. But admittedly, I'm not too sure. Let's see here. 
Uh, no, it looks like ASCII worked with the Clock Tower, um, PS1. Also, back to this for a second. All right, anyway, um, yeah, this side's gonna be, uh, good for, uh, YouTube, I suppose. So, I'm gonna say right now, I'm excited. I think Clock Tower's gonna be good. I think we're eating well. If you wanna hear more about Clock Tower stuff throughout the year, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me how you think about Clock Tower.